It's green for five minutes. Thank you, and thank you, Chief Maudlin. Thank you for Chief Chavez for coming in and speaking with us today. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about unaccompanied minors. I, I'm sure this is, this is a very serious situation that you're familiar with. Under the Trump administration uh, with Title 42, can you tell me when you had a, unaccompanied minors, what would happen to those children? Thank you for the question, ma'am. So um, before or after Title 42, Title 42, so my point is Title 42 did not affect uh, how we deal with unaccompanied children. We do not expel unaccompanied children. So um, when unaccompanied children are encountered, they're, they're brought into our custody. We make sure they get um, any medical attention they need, you know, showers, change of clothes, all, all of that. Um, and then they're turned over to um, HHS's ORR within 72 hours. And that's how it's handled right now under the Biden administration? That's how um, it's been handled for as long as I've been handling unaccompanied children, ma'am. And were they sent back to their home countries before the Biden administration? Not, not to my knowledge. But, but again, ma'am, what I would say is, again, that's much further down the process than where the Border Patrol is. So once we encounter them, whether it was three or four years ago or yesterday, um, they're, they're brought into our custody, assessed, and then eventually turned over to ORR. Where they, where they end up, that's much right. longer after we have them. Um, many of them were sent back to their home countries uh, before and under, under Trump's administration. I want to talk to you a minute about, are you familiar with there was a 20-year-old autistic woman in Maryland who was strangled to death by an illegal alien here, 17-year-old MS-13 gang member. Um, under the program it is, as it is right now, many of the MS-13 gang members are being brought in the country as unaccompanied minors. They're very young. Um, they're, they're under 18, and then they're being, their numbers have doubled, maybe tripled in our country. What, what have you seen with that? Again, ma'am, thanks, thanks for the question. My personal experience in, in the two years I've been in the Tucson sector, I'm, I'm unaware of any significant amount of MS-13 gang members within the unaccompanied children population. Well, how are you able to know if they're gang members or not? Do you have an MS-13 gang database that you're able to search them up in there and, and somehow find out if they're gang members or not? So, ma'am, with, with our agents that have um, a significant amount of training and experience, there are things they look for. There are certainly, as you know, you've, you've probably seen photographs of MS-13 gang members with significant amount of tattoos. Sometimes it's, it's simply an admission of it. Sometimes it may be other, other things that trigger agents to start questioning. Right, but Chief Modlin, they may not have had all their uh, tattoos yet, being that they're young um, and under 18. Uh, being 15 or 16 year old. As a matter of fact, they are coming in the country at a much higher rate. That's why this 20 year old autistic woman was killed because of an illegal alien, a 17 year old MS-13 gang member. And she'd be alive today if our border was secure. Um, you know, one of my Democrat colleagues was talking about the wall um, as if it doesn't work. I assure you that the Democrats believe in walls because they've erected one around the Capitol today because President Joe Biden is delivering his State of the Union address to the country. Walls do work, and we want you to have a wall as, as one of the toolkits in your box to stop the illegal invasion into our country that's occurring every single day. Um, are you aware of how many fentanyl deaths that we've, the, the percentage increase um, in my home state of Georgia? Ma'am, I'm unaware. Well, I'll just let you know, uh, fentanyl increase death have increased to 350% in Georgia. We're not a border state, we're not along the southern border, but fentanyl deaths have gone up 350%. Are you aware of how much money the Mexican cartels make selling fentanyl or what their industry makes? Ma'am, again, thank you. So the, what I do know is that the cartels are making billions, and whether it's fentanyl, whether it's moving people across the border, everything's a commodity to them. And, and to your point earlier, you not being a border state, it, it has been said many times, and I completely agree, that every state is a border state, ma'am. Everything right. that happens on the border affects the entirety of the country. Absolutely, and that's why, that's why a young lady in Maryland should be alive today, because our border should be secure. Um, it's a $20 billion industry the cartels have, $20 billion. 
And that's because our border is not secure. Now, we appreciate the job that you do, both of you, and we're thankful for you, but we are completely against the policies of the Biden administration that's allowing the murder of over 300 Americans a day from fentanyl, allowing the Mexican cartels to illegally make over $20 billion, and allow our country to be invaded every single day. And I yield back the remainder of my time.